Hello, everyone. This is Mark Garapi from Hesi AGE, back for another episode of the Hesi Wrap Up. I'm going to discuss how the RAISE model can be used to help with student autonomy in any LMS, like Microsoft Teams, Google Classroom, or Moodle. This episode is going to have a couple of acronyms, so bear with me. Let's start with RAISE. It is a simple way to remember four essential elements in teaching, whether it be in a whole class or in an individualized mode. Resources, activities, support, and evaluation. LMS stands for Learning Management System. You can find a copy of the RAISE model in the December 2021 issue of our newsletter at bit.ly backslash reciage. That's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash R-E-C-I-T-A-G-E. I'd like to start with the A of the RAISE model because activities should be at the heart of your preparation. Assignments in an LMS can be organized in a way that students either follow a predetermined path or are given choices to achieve their short and midterm goals. It is a good idea to vary the types of assignments also. They might be problem solving or doing research with or without collaboration. It all depends on what is best for the course that you are teaching. A variety of activities can be beneficial for student autonomy and even engagement. If students are given choices, they tend to gravitate towards what they feel they can accomplish on any given day. An LMS lets you store a variety of activities without having piles of photocopies covering your desk. Let's backtrack to resources. Here you need to find a place in your LMS where you can store general and practical information about your course content and how one would go about interacting with that content. Resources in this sense are not assignment sensitive. They apply to the vast majority of the material in your course. A brief outline of how to write an essay is a good example. Students in ELA will most likely write more than one essay. Therefore, Having an overview of this form of writing can be useful throughout the course and even for several course codes. Next, I'd like to talk about support. There are several ways to support student learning in both synchronous and asynchronous fashions. When teachers are in class, they are often perceived as the primary source of support. Students can also get the support they need online or in person through collaboration with their peers. This is where resources play a vital role in student autonomy. Students can be asked to consult resources together before asking the teacher. This can certainly limit the number of times the same question is asked by a multitude of students. If teachers find them practical, email, chats, and online forums can be used as means of communication with students. Group chats and forums are another way to allow students to collaborate and teachers can keep an eye on what information is being shared as moderators. The RAISE model's last component is evaluation. I like this idea because it brings together all the work that's been done in the other three to focus on the terminal goal of succeeding in the course. Activities are designed with student engagement in mind. Resources are stored together and with easy access for students and support is made available during class time and asynchronously to ultimately take the final exam with the greatest chance for success. The RAISE model is a great way to organize your course content and all the more relevant in an online environment. LMSs are designed to make the sharing of information fluid. It is important to take a step back and view the course from beginning to end. RAISE helps you to remember all of the pieces so that you can focus on students that are in need of your help rather than those who just need to be pointed in the right direction. Well, that about wraps it up. Until next time, folks, keep your fingers on the keyboard because that is where the future in education lies.